What if you could create more kindness in the world just by being you? Everyone has the potential to create and receive more kindness. What if kindness is more than being nice and compassionate to others? Have you ever considered what having more kindness for you could create in your life? Get ready to learn how the energy of kindness is integral to reducing stress in your life and how it can assist in healing your body. Now, here is the host of Cultivating Kindness with Karen, facilitator of healing, Karen Leslie. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with me. We have another wonderful, well, for me, Wednesday afternoon to spend together. I don't know what day it'll be, what time it'll be for you, depending on where you are in the world or when you come across this wonderful show. But anyways, thank you. It's always a pleasure to have you here with me. And some of you may or may not know this. Uh, those who follow me will definitely know. Um, but if you're new and you've just found me today for the first time, well, this is my last episode for Cultivating Kindness with Karen. But don't worry, there's 96 other ones that are all going to be available for everyone to go and find and listen to through the Inspired Choices Network and elsewhere. So please, you know, continue to listen, continue to share. But join me today as we celebrate episode 97. Yeah, 22 months I've been here, and it has been an amazing ride and an amazing journey. And it was interesting how a number of weeks ago the, the topic came to mind about triggers, you know, and how they are like a doorway for healing. And at the time, I didn't think much about it, but I tell you, all morning, <laughs> I've been having so much information coming in, so many thoughts of my own and thoughts that have been given to me about triggers and my journey through here having a podcast and having all of you join me, whether you're listening or watching on the TV side. It has been a fabulous experience. And as a result of my journey here, I have, I think, some new perspectives and new experiences and I want to share them with you about triggers. It's a word that carries a lot of energy. Woo! It carries a ton of energy. And it's mostly, hmm, I was going to say it's mostly as a result of how we use the word today. But that's not exactly true. Um, yeah, I'm being very strongly corrected. So the energy in the word trigger is coming from its original um, original definitions. And I'm actually going to just go to that now. Normally, you know, I don't talk about it every show, but if I do, it's usually in the second or third segment. But right off the bat, let's look at the word trigger. So in etymology, you know, one of my favorite websites to go to, in the 1650s, it was defined as movable device by means of which a catch or spring is released in a mechanism set in action. So very mechanical. So you could think of the uh, trigger on a gun, or you could think of a trigger, um, even simple, the trigger that's on a hose for the nozzle when you're watering. Then it shifted a little bit. That definition is absolutely true. And when we think of it, like still today, but when you think of it from the energy of uh, releasing something, if it's a bullet, then there is still that very powerful, um, very strong energy with the word trigger. You can actually add into it, what is it called? Um, hair trigger? I think that's the term. When something's like really sensitive and you've got to be very careful, very cautious around it. Then when we get um, a little more recent, we have the noun for trigger being cause an intense and unusually negative emotional reaction in a person or animal. And that is the, the way of looking at trigger today. It's that that emotional response we have with that word. And those emotions, they are, can be, 
as equally as strong as when you think of the mechanical way of looking at the word trigger. Intense, can be hairline, um, hairline, no, hair trigger, like really sensitive, very instantaneous and can happen in a blink of an eye. So there's lots of ways that we're going to look at this word today, how to work with this word and the energy of it. And of course, I'll give you ideas on how you can perhaps change how you are working with your own personal triggers, might even give you some information from your own perspective of how you might help somebody else when you see them dealing with one of their triggers. But the goal today really is let's look at this from a psychological perspective. And I, yes, I really want to make this very, very clear that I'm going to be talking about triggers that um, are not a result of like war, a gun being shot at, um, being caught in a fire, like these very intense life threatening situations. That is not the scope of what I'm getting into today. That's not the scope of where my expertise necessarily falls. We're going to be looking at triggers more um, from traumas, yes, but not that intense, and from our day-to-day -day living, from the way we think or the way we've been spoken to. There's so much that we can look at with triggers. Now, in the notes for the show, you know, oftentimes we will say ourselves or we will hear people say, right, I got triggered or that is a trigger for me. Each time it's likely with an energy that the triggers were something that were bad or something to avoid. Triggers are a reminder that you have some healing that you could be looking at. How about changing the mindset or belief? that triggers are to be avoided and see them as an opportunity for personal healing. So does this change your belief in the meaning of triggers for you or will triggers become less uncomfortable or less painful for you? Perhaps. And that is my goal, to be honest, by the end of the show, to shift some of that energy around it so that you can deal with them in a way that may be brand new and truthfully could be very life-changing. So let's look at this. When we, when we think about triggers, I really do think that most of us are going to go to that area of they're bad, there's something to avoid, um, potentially harmful to you, uh, you may feel quite unsafe. Uh, and all of that is going to feel very real and true for you. A hundred percent. But as I've been saying now for a while, remember, everything is meaningless until you give it meaning. So we're going to like, really look at that today. What meaning are you giving to the word trigger? And what meaning are you giving to the situation, the circumstance, the people, whatever it might be for you that are associated with the trigger? It really impacts how it affects you. It can be paralyzing for some people in the moment when they recognize or they think I've been triggered. And what if we can soften that? What if we can change that? What if we could even prevent that feeling of being paralyzed? I think it's possible. Again, within the scope of the way I'm looking at the example of triggers today. So they are often tied to a situation, to a person, or to an event that's in our past. And so when we get triggered, where do you think you go? Immediately to the past. Immediately 
back to the event. This ties in really well to the show, you know, being chained to your unconscious commitments. A trigger can be or can become an unconscious commitment. So you could always go back to uh, October 9, 2024, if you want to listen to that show. I'm pretty sure I've got that date correct. The commitment to your trigger, to holding on to it, to thinking this is what just is in my life. Like, it's here. It's there because you have an attachment to it. It may be quite unconscious. It's also giving you what people will call a secondary gain. So there's a benefit to holding on to your trigger or triggers. It's really important. And we're going to look at this today as to, so what is that benefit? What is that secondary gain that you're getting from this that you are holding on to? And sometimes very consciously, because when triggers keep happening and uh, we recognize them, we acknowledge them, and then we figure out how to manipulate a situation where a trigger has been pulled, a trigger has arrived. We can be really good, excellent, in fact, at manipulating circumstances, people, situations around us when the trigger arrives. So because we know we get good at that, it reinforces holding on to it. That may sound mean <laughs> for some of you. Um, that may sound absurd to others, and that's okay. You know that I am always choosing to give you two sides of the same coin so that you can look at things from a different perspective. Hopefully, widen your point of view on it. Hopefully, encourage you to question whether or not the belief or the point of view you have is still accurate for you. Or has something changed? Have you changed? Have you got more wisdom with you now? Or whatever it might be where you would allow that to shift for you now. Triggers are all around us. For you, you might want to give some thought. You know, do they happen frequently? Do you have a number of them in your life? Or do you just have one or two and they don't pop up very often. Regardless as to where you are, you will get some great information today in the show. I would love you to just take a moment and find your answer to this question. Are your triggers important to you? I get right away that a lot of you, the answer is yes. You may think no, because they represent a difficult time. But we become very attached to them. As a result, they are important to us. We design our life around them, often from a perspective of avoiding them. Some people will use them to actually bring the trigger up themselves by creating a situation for that to happen as a way of manipulating what's going on around them. We are very clever. We are very, very brilliant. And remember, like that may sound mean, that may sound like something nobody would do, but remember your mind has no point of view on this, right? Your mind is working with what you have worked with often. Your mind is working with that chemical response that just hits in an instant as soon as that thought and emotion come through. And you know the mind and the body, the gut, the brain, they love that chemical response. So they seek it out often, all the time actually for, in some cases. This is why they are important to us. Logically, you may argue that. But again, right? 
That mind has no point of view. It just knows that this happens. It knows it happens frequently. And it wants to continue with it. Anything that's frequent in our thoughts, anything that's frequent in the chemical responses in our body is looked at as a good thing. It's like the mind, the brain is like super keen on collecting frequent, frequent flyer points for these thoughts that we have going on. What a strange analogy, but yep, that's the first time that I've looked at it as frequent flyer points, but that's essentially what's going on. So we're up to our first break on that. So please don't go away. I am so happy you are here with me on the Inspired Choices Network for today's episode of Cultivating Kindness with Karen. And as you know, I'm Karen Leslie, and you can always get in touch with me. My email will continue to work. You can still reach out ask questions or, you know, see if you want to work with me. My email is karen at karenlesley.ca and Leslie is spelled L-E-S-L-I-E. So don't go away, everyone. Stay here with us because there's so much more to unpack about triggers and how you can change your frequent flyer points to something else that actually might give you more benefit maybe even take you on a vacation. We'll see. All right. We'll be right back, everyone. Thanks. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everybody. So, triggers. What do you think a trigger actually is? Sincere question. What is a trigger to you? A trigger, and this is likely not the answer that came to your mind, a trigger is just information. It's just data. It's information that has come to you quickly, in an instant, like just boom. But that's all it is. It's an awareness that you get. Now, they happen so fast that often we miss the information right before the trigger hits. Because it's super quick. This is a highway that has been developed in the neural pathways. And I tell you, it's a deep trench because it's been used so often. And, you know, we're encouraged to talk about our triggers or to say to somebody, whoa, okay, that's a trigger for me. We are encouraged to recognize them as a way of looking after ourselves. The problem or the flip side of that is that, right, we we reinforce that neural pathway every time we do that, every time we acknowledge it, every time we, we think, oh, what if I get triggered? What if 
somebody says, does, whatever it is for you that will cause a trigger. And we strengthen it. And they are, they're like steel. Like they're really strong. Which is one of the reasons that when we go to work with them and try to get rid of them, it will take some time. And I really want you to know this. It will take some time. That neural pathway has to be slowly broken down, let it disintegrate, while at the same time, you're building another pathway beside it. Like think of, you know, oh my gosh, if you think of road construction and they're building a new bridge over a road. So they, they're taking down the old bridge and they're going to build a new one, a better one, right beside where it is. I don't know about you, but I don't understand road work. I can't figure out how it gets done. It's such a mess, uneven heights and all kinds of weird things. But then all of a sudden, oh, look, there it is. And it totally makes sense now. Well, we're the same way. So we've got to deconstruct that neural pathway while building up the other ones. And just like road work, it takes time and it may not be linear. It may not look like it's making sense to you. To somebody it is, that somebody might be me, if you choose to work with me, but it may not feel like it's following a path that was what you were expecting, but you can get there. You can absolutely get there. So when we have these triggers, we can have large ones, ones that really like just stop us, paralyze us, like I was saying in the last segment. You know, we go into fight or flight, freeze. Um, some say fawn as well. Myself, I tend to be a freeze person. Uh, in an emergency, I I will act real quick. I will react and do what needs to be done. But then afterwards, I go into freeze. Um, a lot of other a lot of triggers for me will cause me to freeze. That's just me. But the there's also triggers that we have that are less, maybe less recognizable is a good word. Ones that you may not even recognize are a trigger for you because they're very common. When you say something such as, yes, but, you answered that way because there actually was a trigger there. Yeah. When you hear yourself think, oh, I can't, I can't make a choice right now. That could be from a trigger. You've gone into freeze. Or um, I can't make a decision right now. Um, I, I just don't understand what you're saying to me. Or I just don't understand. That can be a result of having been triggered. They can be very um, subtle and common in our way of speaking. You know, you could find yourself saying, you know, like, stop telling me that. Stop saying that. That's a result of a trigger. And what that person could be saying to you or telling you could be be seen by other people as really quite inconsequential. Like, what's the big deal? They're just saying, you know, that the kitchen's a bit of a mess or whatever it might be. Or, um, you know, your finances kind of look a little wonky. However this is coming at you, if it's come at you frequently enough, and possibly from a person that has influence over you or you you feel you trust them or you feel that you uh, that they know more than you so you you've attached a significance there somehow in that relationship these become everyday triggers they get into your subconscious thinking 
sure, they land in the conscious mind for the beginning, but because you will keep hearing them and you keep reacting, responding, adding emotion to them, they become part of your subconscious. We don't think of this as being a trigger, but it is. And it's going to take you to the past, as I said in the first segment. It's going to put you into the two most likely places I see with people is it puts you into blame. So you can blame the other person or go into attack of the other person. Or you go into victim thinking. And you go into blaming yourself, perhaps. or But you go into this doubt and judgment and self-defeating way of looking at yourself as a result of these common phrases that have become triggers for you. And in all honesty, one trigger is not any worse than another trigger. It's still having the same response in your body and creating the same outcome. It digs the same deep trench in that neural pathway. You may try to fluff it off by saying, oh, it's no big deal. But it is for you. And you're the only person in this equation that I really am, am focused on. Not the other person. Not what other people may think about the situation for you. But you. How you are interpreting something. How you are reacting to something. Is what is creating it as a trigger for you. Now. This means that we can all have a lot of triggers and we can be triggered daily and multiple times a day. So think about that. How fatiguing can that be? How much doubt or self-judgment or criticism is coming in as a result every day? It can be huge. I've talked about numerous times how many thoughts we have a day, like 60,000 to 80,000, and that like 90% of them are not great thoughts. They're repeating thoughts on things that are not kind to ourselves. And a bunch of those can be triggers, will be triggers. I think that's a stronger statement, and I think that that's more appropriate. They will be triggers for you. The fact that though that you don't know that they're a trigger is where we have more difficulty because you don't know that you should be doing something about it. And yes, I know I just used the word should, but I would love you to consider taking that time, pausing, listening to words that are spoken to you, listening to the words in your head and Zeroing in on the emotion that's there. All three of those will, you know, will take some practice to look at and to be able to look at them fairly quickly. You're going to need to slow them down initially, and, and that's okay. It's a good thing to do. And as you work with them more and more, you'll be able to see things quicker. But it's so important. You know, the the cards that I pulled for today, you know, they're, they're brilliant, like, they all talk about that you need to change how you're thinking about your reality and your life. You like one was was great. It says sometimes the mind can play games and sometimes our perceptions can be wrong. That is so true, but we don't want to admit it. We want to be seen as being correct and seeing things in a way that actually work for us when so much of our day is spent in the exact opposite place. And the opposite energy. Then you just keep drawing in more energy that matches that. Building, deepening that neural pathway more. You know, it is super important to release old stories and patterns and judgments. And you, I know you know this. I say it a lot. But your triggers are one of the ways that those are staying put. 
And because we have this belief that triggers are important, right? we need to recognize them and we need to tell people about them and we need we need to guard them. There are like a safety net. Well, I would argue it's a safety net that you've put a lock on the other side. And like I was saying, I think it was last week, you've created your own prison. Acknowledging a trigger, recognizing you have a trigger, yes, absolutely, yes. I wish everyone to have that insight. It's what you do with it that we need to change. And we're going to get into that when we come back from our next break. We're here again already. So don't go away. Please join me for the next segment because, sure, you all recognize you have triggers. I get that. I understand that. But now let's figure out how to work with them, how to start to change that strength and that hold that they have on you. All right. So I will see you on the other side of this short break. Thank you for being here with me. Inspiring Choices Network is a fabulous place to hang out. And remember, I'm not the only host here. There's lots of amazing people. So, you know, check out the network. Check out the other hosts. It's a brilliant place for you to spend some time and to gain more information about you and other circumstances in your life. So we will be back just in a couple minutes, everyone. Thanks so much for being here with me today. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Karen at KarenLeslie.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everybody. So, I had so many thoughts. And I, <laughs> those of you who hang out with me, you know that sometimes my nose will itch and do a few things when spirit's here. Yep, I must have somebody new here with me. I'm not taking the time to check in, but it's my chin today. So, hello. <laughs> The universe is always working with us. And you've heard me say that the universe follows us. We take the lead and it is reading or listening to our energy. So think about the energy, which I was talking about earlier, of triggers, our response to them, how that usually works for us, and then the fact that there are, can be so many during a day. What's the universe hearing? What energy is the universe reading? It's reading the triggers. Now, there's two ways that we can look at this. One, it's reading the energy of the triggers. So like your mind... It will be reinforcing them so that they come more often. And the universe will also be sending them. 
And now you might think, like, well, that is ridiculous. The universe is kind. The universe is supportive. The universe is here to help me. So why the heck would it send me a trigger? Well, it's sending you a trigger because that's the energy that you are currently working in and you are being in more times than you are being in something else. So it's following your lead. So there's huge advantages, not just in the neural pathways, but in how the universe works with you to reduce your triggers or to actually be able to let some of them completely go. The universe reads your energy. It matches your energy. If you want something new and different, you need to come up with it. You will have lots of opportunities around for different possibilities, but you have to recognize it. You have to be open to seeing it and go, oh, that looks cool. Then you spend time with that, with the thought, with bringing the emotions in, with seeing it in your imagination. You be the energy of it. And the universe reads that energy. Works both ways. The fact that it works for helping you to create something means it needs to also work on the other side of that same coin. It just does. It doesn't have a point of view either. The universe is here to support us. How that support looks, we have a big role in that. A really big role in that. Working with blame, working in a victim way of thinking all the time. Yeah, you'll be given new opportunities for that to be reinforced. Staying in the past, you'll be given more opportunities to look back there. So here, I, let's see, before I run out of time, when a trigger happens, and now you have a wider perspective on what can be a trigger, start wherever is comfortable for you. But when you know a trigger has just presented itself, there's a number of steps I want you to do. First, I just want you just recognize that it was a trigger. Don't go into it's good or it's bad, right? Don't give it meaning. Just, oh, that's one of my triggers. Just a statement. Do your very best to not attach an emotion to it. If emotion's coming in, deep breaths. Slow yourself down and, and truly take that moment to pause. Whoever's with you, if there's somebody there, they can wait. They can absolutely wait. You, you are the important person in this moment. The next step, look at the trigger. Are you in danger? Is your environment safe? Or just look at your environment. Is something in the environment what brought the trigger forward? Right? Again, resist going into blame, resist going into victim mode, and just look around at the trigger as to where it came from. Now, the third step, we're going to look for what caused whatever it is to be a trigger for you. Now, your emotions will give you a lot of information here. You know, like anger, fear, shame, safety, whatever it might be. Looking what's underneath that is going to give you a lot of really great information as to what that trigger is about. Now, here's where you may need someone to work with to help you out. Because some of these emotions and uh, ways of looking at something can be uh, traumatic within themselves. So assistance may be, you know, really, really helpful for you. But I want you to look at, okay, so what is this? So that you have somewhere to start kind of digging and looking. And now the fourth step, now that you've got a, a, a little bit clearer, maybe not totally clear, but a little bit clearer understanding 
of what brought that trigger on, I want you to ask yourself a question. Is this true? Or you may need to put the word truth into this. Truth. Is this true? You will find more and more that as you work with this, that you will see that many of the triggers are not actually true anymore. They were 100% true when they originated. Absolutely. But because of all of the circumstances I've been talking about throughout the show, they have maintained a prominent place in your day-to-day -day living. But that doesn't mean that they are still true. So ask yourself, is this true? No. Am I in danger? If you are, then take the necessary steps to get to safety or to bring safety to you. But if you're not, if this is based on a memory or a way of looking at something that is no longer valid, then there's strength and power and empowerment for you to recognize that. And then you start to build evidence of the fact that that trigger is no longer a valid trigger for you. That it's one that you can start to let go of. That you can find evidence to prove that it's not correct. And as you're doing this, you're reframing your thoughts. That just means you're building a new neural pathway. Like, how amazing is that? Reframing your thoughts. Changing the emotion that has been attached to it. It might go to one of just curiosity. You may go a little more into a more neutral emotion with it. Just that pause and going, huh. So what is this really? You've heard me say, by asking a question, you can change the energy that you're in in that moment. When you make a statement such as, that's triggering for me, you reinforce it. A question, is this still a trigger for me? Like truly, question, curiosity, truth, is this still true? Or is this true? Really helpful and important questions for you. To do all this, we've got to slow down our thinking. Slow down our reaction time. We basically need to slow down. Get off of autopilot. Again, remember. Everything is meaningless until you give it meaning. And then you've got this whole body of yours that goes into response as well with the trigger and the chemical response and the thoughts and emotions and all of that stuff. And I don't say this enough anymore. I used to say it a lot, but everything you do from the neck up helps you from the neck down. Meaning when you work with your thoughts, when you work with a fear, when you work with a trigger, a doubt, all of it, and you move through the healing of it, and you move into that new place of energy and kindness for you, all the cells in your body benefit. All of them do. Every time you do something to help you from the neck up, it helps you from the neck down. So think about that. We're going to go for our first break. Or not our first break. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? But no, we're going to our last one. We've got our final break here on cultivating kindness with Karen. Thank you for being here with me. It's so much fun. And truly, I am here with a lot of excitement to kind of wrap up 
so much of what I've been talking about over the last oh, almost two years of hanging out with you, bringing it together today with yeah, I have an agenda. I so do, even though I tell you not to have agendas. I have an agenda of hoping to empower you to look at how you are functioning in your days and your thoughts that you have so that you can truly make a choice to change them. We're going to wrap this all up when we come back from our break. Again, thank you for being here with me. It's so much fun. And remember, you can follow me on all the different social media platforms it's i'm very very easy to find and then you can also go to my website karenlesley.ca and find more information about how we can work together all right don't go away everyone we will be right back all right thanks we all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness these experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world the universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. All right, let me do my very best here to kind of wrap this all up for you. In the beginning, at the beginning of the show, I talked about the energy of the word trigger and how it has this really strong energy with it. Now, the, the strength of the energy that's naturally in the word, and then you add in that from a human perspective, we have reinforced this strength. We've given it extra meaning. Triggers are a challenge for most people to look at, to like stare it in the face because we're taught to avoid them. And then they are also a challenge to decrease their effectiveness and their hold on us. Right? Triggers do hold us hostage. They do. Triggers keep us in a prison. And yes, it is one that we have made. Now, Oh, whoa, way too many tangents to go on here. We know that we influence everything that's happening in our life. So we could get that into a much broader perspective of that we have created the prison. But I want to keep it simple in this moment. So the triggers are keeping us stuck. We've reinforced them by buying into them as still being real and true for us today assuming that they are the exact same as they were when they were first brought forward for us from whatever the event is or whatever somebody may have been saying to you. That question, is this true? Write it down. Work with it. You've changed. The world around you's changed. It's possible that the person who may have been triggering you may not even be a part of your life anymore, but we still hold on to that person energetically. The event that caused something, the event is in the past. It is. And we keep going back and visiting it. And we are causing more and more harm to ourselves. Yet, we've got people telling us that those triggers are important to keep you safe. But from my perspective, they're causing more harm than they are causing good. They are information. That's all they are. A trigger is just information reminding you of something in the past. 
Do you want to keep buying into that same piece of information? Would you like to be able to let it go and set yourself free from this and move into a different world for yourself? One that opens up doors of possibilities and experiences and other types of emotions. One where you are no longer afraid to go into a certain situation because you're concerned as to what might happen. One where you could maybe go into a similar situation as a new, empowered, stronger person that doesn't get triggered. And then you acknowledge that. And you pat yourself on the back and you go, well done. And then you can go and find another one to work on. Listening to your thoughts, listening to the words you're saying, whether they are out loud or silently in your mind, is really important. Are you speaking the truth or are you on autopilot? Are you speaking your truth? Or are you saying what you think others want to hear? Are you people pleasing? Are you avoiding something? Check out those secondary gains that you have been receiving, whether it's been for weeks or years. Are they really supportive? Are they still today? Chances are high that they were at some point, but they're not anymore. You're different. You may not see that difference in you, but you are, and you can access that person deep with inside you and let them come out. A trigger is just information. You know, get past this, oh my God, energy when a trigger comes through. Bring yourself to that place of like, oh, okay, that was a trigger. Is that still true? And allow yourself to work with it. The emotion you give it is what's going to keep it there. When you can change that emotion, this is when you will allow it to disintegrate and move out and bring something else in that's kinder more loving for you right I mean that's what it's all about the kindness to ourselves that's the foundational point of cultivating kindness with Karen we have forgotten on so many levels and in so many areas of our life how to be kind to ourself autopilot is not somewhere to hang out it is not a place that will bring you the joy and the adventures and the opportunities that somewhere inside you, that little pilot light that's still there is longing for. And you can do it. You can find the ease and the flow and the fun in every day if you're willing to go searching for it. And yeah, you'll pull some stuff up. And yes, the universe is going to give you things. And we will still continue to use the word trigger. But when you hear it, you can remind yourself, ah, this is how I look at it now. And you can step into a different energy with it and not go back into that trap of the energy of it. You're that strong. And I believe in you. And I want to thank you for being here with me for like 97 shows. I do believe in you. You can change your life. You can up the kindness to you. And of course, remember, waves of kindness are always phenomenal to bring in every day. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Karen Leslie returns Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can find Karen at KarenLeslie.ca and follow her on social media. 
Until next Wednesday, Garrett is sending you waves of kindness for a fabulous week. Remember, it's only you who has the power to be and receive the kindness required to change your life.